Shallow planktonic and benthic foraminifera limit the age of the Kaldana formation to the late early or early middle Eocene, and the current interpretation of global sea level stratigraphy favors the latter. The short duration of the low water interval when Kaldana mammals have encountered means that differences between samples likely represent differences in local living environments, deposition sites, and sampling, rather than a substantial difference in age. Diacodexus is the oldest known even-toed ungulate. In life, it would have resembled a modern diker, measuring about 50 centimeters in body length, but with a much longer tail. Unlike most later species of artiodactyl, it still had five toes on each foot, although the third and fourth toes were already elongated. It may also have had small hooves on each toe. Its teeth suggest that it was a herbivorous browser. About the size of a raccoon or domestic cat, this omnivorous pig-like creature shared some of the traits of whales, and showed signs of adaptations to aquatic life. Their bones were similar to the bones of modern creatures such as the hippopotamus, and helped reduce buoyancy so that they could stay underwater. This suggests a survival strategy similar to that of the African mouse deer or water chevrotain which, when threatened by a bird of prey, dives into water and hides beneath the surface for up to four minutes. Like other members of the family Pachycetidae, which are considered the earliest and least specialized of the archaic cetaceans, Ichthyolestes represents an early quadrupedal phase of the land-to-sea transition which occurs in the cetacean lineage. The Pachyceta skeleton reveals several details regarding the creature's unique senses and provides a newfound ancestral link between terrestrial and aquatic animals. As previously mentioned, the Pachyceta's upward-facing eye placement was a significant indication of its habitat. Even more so, however, was its auditory abilities. Like all other cetaceans, Pachycetus had a thickened skull bone known as the auditory bulla, which was specialized for underwater hearing. The best-known protocetid, Rhodocetus is known from two partial skeletons that taken together give a complete image of an Eocene whale that had short limbs with long hands and feet that were probably webbed and a sacrum that was immobile with four partially fused sacral vertebrae. It is one of several extinct whale genera that possess land mammal characteristics, thus demonstrating the evolutionary transition from land to sea. The exact diet of Andrusarchus has also been questioned as the previous older apex predator theories don't carry as much weight as they used to. Although the jaws would have had tremendously powerful muscles, most of the teeth in the mouth are not particularly well adapted for any one purpose. The forward canines are the largest and are most useful for getting a grip on things, or perhaps in the case of a carnivore to deliver a killing bite such as puncturing the cranium of a prey animal. Like primitive rhinoceratoids, Forstercoeperia possesses blunt ends on the tips of its nasals, above the nasal incision. Unlike all modern rhinoceroses, the nasals of Forstercoeperia, as well as many related genera, lack rugosities, which suggests that they lacked any form of horn. Eotitanops is the earliest known genus of Brontothere. While brontotheres generally known as very large animals, it was only 45 centimeters tall at the shoulder. It probably resembled a larger, bulkier version of its contemporary, the horse-like Palaeothere hyracotherium. Like hyracotherium, it ate leaves and had five-toed front legs and three-toed hind legs. The 1.5 meters long beast was related to Palaeotheres, and suspected to be the ancestor of modern tapirs and rhinoceroses. 
Physically, it would have looked very similar to modern tapers, although it probably lacked the taper's characteristic proboscis. Its teeth, however, resembled those of a rhinoceros, supporting the idea of its relationship with that group. The ear structure of Ambulocetus is very interesting as it appears to have only worked while it was underwater. Its skull is arranged in such a way that it could swallow food while underwater. This was achieved by the arrangement of air passages in the snout. The teeth were also very similar to other early cetaceans and a chemical analysis of these teeth has shown them to have been exposed to both fresh and salt water. This implies that Ambulocetus was active in river estuaries where fresh meat salt water, but can also suggest that it was a go-anywhere predator. Dalinists was a small whale weighing 500 kilograms it was similar to but 20% larger than Remington Acetus, the external nares are located more anteriorly, the sagittal crest is much higher, the rostrum is angled down 20 degrees relative to the main axis of the brain case. Remington Acetus is noted as being smaller and significantly more gracile than most of its relative genera. This more generalized observation is combined with the fact that all four limbs of Remington Acetus were still well enough adapted for walking on land while the tail seems to have served little propulsive use for swimming. Basilosaurus is thought to have been common in the Tethys Ocean. It was one of the largest, if not the largest, animals of the Paleogene. It was the top predator of its environment, preying on sharks, large fish and other marine mammals. Although not preserved, the structure of the tail vertebrae suggests support for a tail fluke as seen in modern cetaceans. The reduced limbs would probably have been of little use in actual locomotion leading to the suggestion that Basilosaurus used an undulating motion to propel itself in the water. This up and down motion may have also provided quick bursts of speed at prey items. The Chitterwada Formation is a geological formation in western Pakistan, made up of Oligocene and early Miocene terrestrial fluvial facies. The sediments were deposited in coastal depositional environments when Pakistan was partly covered by the Tethys Ocean.
These sharks come from the Cretaceous and survived the mass extinction and can be found in the Miocene deposits. The teeth morphology of Cretolamna implies that it was a generalist. It was a predator and preyed upon large bony fish and squids. Compared to the nurse shark, Nebrius shark has a more placid disposition and will often allow divers to touch and play with it. However, it should be accorded respect due to its powerful jaws and sharp teeth. Astorgosuchus is an extinct monospecific genus of crocodilian, closely related to true crocodiles. This crocodile may have reached lengths of up to 8 meters and is known to have preyed on many of the large mammals found in its environment. Bite marks of a large crocodile have been found on the bones of juvenile Paraceratherium, however if these were left by Astorgosuchus cannot be said with certainty. Several key adaptations suggest that Deinotherium was a folivorous, browsing proboscidean that preferred open woodland habitats and fed on the leaves of the tree canopy. One of its most enigmatic features are their downturned tusks and their function. Research conducted on Deinotherium suggests that these tusks were likely not used for digging, nor are they sexually dimorphic, leaving use in feeding as their most likely function. These tusks exhibit patterns of wear, in particular on their medial and caudal sides. Progiraffa is an extinct genus of giraffid artiodactyls that resembled more like a horse instead of a giraffe. It may have fed on vegetation found in its open field habitat. The genus typifies the family Anthracotheriidae, if only because it is the most thoroughly studied. In many respects, especially the anatomy of the lower jaw, Anthracotherium, as with the other members of the family, is allied to the hippopotamus, of which it is probably an ancestral form. The exact diets of entelodonts have always been subjects of debate for paleontologists because although they may have been capable of eating plants, the larger ones such as periantelodon may have used their large size to either kill other animals or intimidate other predators into giving up their kills. The main feature of Brachypotherium is greatly shortened limbs with movable widely disposed fingers. External finger of forelimb could be directed away more freely, it allowed to increase greatly the area of support for the heavier front part of the body. These features indicate the ability to move on soft ground, such as marshy banks of a water basin, where the rhino fed on rich semi-aquatic vegetation. The shoulder height of Paraceratherium was about 5 meters and its weight is estimated to have been about 20 tons it had large, tusk-like incisors and a nasal incision that suggests it had a prehensile upper lip or proboscis. The lifestyle of Paraceratherium may have been similar to that of modern large mammals such as the elephants and extant rhinoceroses. Because of its size, it would have had few predators and a slow rate of reproduction. It was a browser, eating mainly leaves, soft plants, and shrubs. 
It lived in habitats ranging from arid deserts with a few scattered trees to subtropical forests. The reasons for the animal's extinction are unknown, but various factors have been proposed. <laughs>